Hi everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Venetia or the Woolly Worker and I am a knitter and crocheter based in Scotland. I'm originally from Belgium but I moved to Scotland around seven or eight years ago and I've loved it ever since. I've been knitting for around I think three to four years but I've really just been taking it quite seriously in the last year or so. So if you're a returning viewer, thank you so, so much for coming back to my channel. I've posted one podcast episode, which you can check out if you'd like. That would mean a lot. Um, and I hope that you like it. And if you're a new viewer, then yeah, welcome to my channel. This is going to be a knitting related channel mostly, where I will talk about the works in progress, my finished objects, show and tell, uh, acquisitions of yarn or knitting related paranophilia or however you pronounce that and um yes yeah, i'm just so, some nitty chat hopefully uh i have been watching podcasts for a while now and i've always wanted to be a part of it and get a bit more involved making some knitting friends hopefully so i'd love to engage with you and not just this being a one-way street where i just speak at my camera so please please if you uh feel inclined you can send a few uh, comments or messages so i'm coming here from quite a, a, a weird weather day today in scotland it's sunny but cloudy so the sun may come in and out but that's okay because today will be more of a one-off video not a podcast i will talk about the sweaters that i want to make this year there are 10 it was really really hard rounding off that list and not making it 20. So I won't be showing too, too much, but I will be putting pictures on the screen. So uh, I just want to preface this by saying that I will be putting as much information as I can. This is really important to me because I, I love it when other people put information. So I will be putting out photos, names, designers, color names, color numbers. Um, and if I don't say it out loud, then it will be on screen. Uh, and if not, it will absolutely 100% definitely be in the description below because there I can go in as much detail as I want. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at The Woolly Worker or Ravelry The Woolly Worker. And this is also where I'm going to keep a bit of a log and track of uh, everything knitting related. So yeah, you can have a look there. Maybe follow me on Ravelry. We can be friends and take inspiration from each other's projects. So yeah, without any further ado, let's get into it because there is quite a lot to get through. So there's not really a particular order to this list. Uh, I'd say about half of those sweaters, I already have the yarn in stash. And then the other half, I don't have the yarn in stash, but I know what yarn I want to use. And I just haven't bought it because I need to work down the stash first. My shelves are um, too full of yarn. So the first sweater, it's by the one and only Rebecca from the Crea Bea and it is the Cargill sweater. I absolutely love this sweater. I know it was a huge hit when it was first released. That's what everyone was talking about on Ravelry and Instagram. I didn't know Rebecca at the time actually and this is the sweater that made me watch her podcasts. Uh, and I love her, it's amazing. It's her first design. She's got, I think, three more adult designs that she's now since released or are in testing. And another one of hers that I want to do is the Care sweater, which is a color work sweater that has like a band of um, color work down the body and sleeves. And I want to make that in wool in it because Rebecca talks about it all the time and I want to try out a new British wool brand. And I really like the colorway from Caroline from Caroline's Knits, which is made in, I think, cream nep. And it's that beautiful shade. I think Petite Net recently released a color in Pierre Gint, uh, which was also extremely popular. I think she's made her Louvre sweater in that new color, which is pr pretty much the same. It's a white with black nips. So yeah, very trendy at the moment. But anyway, the point of this is that I want to make the Cargill sweater. So um, it's a beautiful, beautiful sweater, top down raglan with this dip stitch pattern. I already have the yarn, so I will show you what I've got. So I've chosen to go for this beautiful baby blue, and this is actually pretty good on this camera. This is pretty much what it looks like. The color is very light blue. This is the Le Petit Silk Mohair and then Le Petit Lambswool. 
and they're both in the same shade. And the color is 100% inspired by Madeleine from Knit One Pearl One on Instagram, which is um, a knitter slash designer that I really, really love. Uh, and I will mention her again later in this video. So yeah, it's influencing my choices. So this smells very sheepy. This is lamb's wool. Yeah, it's, it's, I still don't know if I like it. Uh, it gets used to. Uh, when I first opened the bag, when I received that, it was a waft of it. But yeah, so this is 30% mulberry silk, 70% kid mohair, and this is 100% lamb's wool. This is fingering weight, and then this is lace. And it's beautiful. It is pricey, which is, I think, maybe one of the reasons why I haven't cast on this sweater yet. I bought the yarn, I want to say, in summer? and this is obviously January, um, and I bought it as a reward because I was able to secure an interview for a job that was really important to me. And I had not yet done the interview, but I wanted this to be a reward for getting the interview. And then I said to myself, if I end up getting the job, then it will become my new job sweater. You know, it will represent that. I don't know if you guys do that, where you associate some yarns or some patterns or sweaters with events in your life or like if someone gifted you the yarn then it has like a special place in your heart and maybe it's like your like mom sweater or a uh, boyfriend sweater because your boyfriend gifted you some yarn uh, but I do that so this is my new job sweater because spoiler alert I did get the job in the end which which was amazing so definitely felt good about splurging a bit and rewarding myself with this beautiful gorgeous yarn um and then the other reason why I haven't casted on this pattern yet is because I have swatched for it. Oh, and I've got this swatch right here. So, oh, look at that. That is insanely beautiful. This is motivating me. I'm gonna cast this on right away. This is amazing. So, the dip stitch takes a while to get used to, and I can tell that this sweater is going to take a long time to make and I like um, I like to be rewarded right away which is why I like making accessories every now and then but I know I'm going to love this sweater I know it's going to be such a staple and a, a beautiful piece of art honestly so what I've done is I've actually casted on a gift knit for my mom so mom if you're watching this uh, don't watch uh, but this is a Cargill cowl which Rebecca has released as well as a pattern where the proceeds were going to charity for the first month, which is great for the Fistula Foundation. So read up about that if you're interested in uh, the charity or the cowl pattern. So this is just going to be a cowl. This is in grey. It looks quite similar to the blue, actually. Well, well, yeah. So this is in grey, and this is in the same colorway as my uh, September sleepover. No, Stockholm sleepover, which I talk about in my previous podcast. So go check that out for the details of this. But this is... Um, yeah, this is working out quite nice. This is going to be very squishy, stretchy. I've done this in a day, so I think maybe I'll finish this tomorrow. And this is definitely helpful in that it's making me um, learn the dip stitch pattern a little better and get used to it and also motivating me to have a sweater made of this entire thing. So yeah, I think this is going to be a sweater that I make pretty soon, or I want to anyway. But uh, it's already been 10 minutes, so I think I'm just going to speed right up because otherwise we'll never get down um, the list. So the next sweater is, is the Jeol sweater, Jeol from Ego Knits. And if you've been on Instagram, you must have seen this sweater before. It is extremely popular and for good reason, it is gorgeous. And uh, I've chosen to go for the colors that are suggested in the pattern, which is something that is quite usual for me because I don't like having to think too much. So those are the colors. There's sand and charcoal, and then the matching mohair, which is a 7S from Isiger. And then they didn't have black, so I ordered from the same shop that I got the Cargill, the Cargill yarn from, and I got it in Le Petit Silk mohair in black, because I thought two blacks are going to be the same. It's fine. So yeah, those are the color combinations. It's gorgeous. It was also a bit pricey. Uh, I could only get three kinds of the sand color because it was <laughs> sold out everywhere because everyone wanted to make this sweater. So I think mine is going to have to be a little more cropped because it calls for four, but that's okay. I think I've not done this sweater because I was worried at first that the yarn, the tweed 
is a little itchy but now that I'm touching it here it, it's not so I think maybe my tolerance grew so I think this is this is going to be completely fine I'll swatch and then maybe I'll have to unravel the swatch because I'll be low on yarn but yeah I'm excited this is a, 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 a an interesting sweater construction as well I don't think it's a raglan so it, it's always nice to vary and there's been some gorgeous color combinations I've seen online where I definitely wanted to copy them, maybe something with lower contrast. I know that Egonet is currently testing or is just about to release the sister version of this pattern, which is the Oba sweater. And that one has the color work all the way um, up and down the body and the sleeves. And I've seen some versions of them with low contrast, which I really, really like. So maybe uh, maybe the Oba sweater is in my future, but first the Geol. But yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. So the next sweater is, uh, I basically want to make a sweater from Andrea Maori or Andrea Renee Nets. And first of all, I was dead set on doing the shifty from her with the spin cycle dyed in the wool. wool. But it is so pricey. I think it uses four skines of the main color and then three contrasting skines. And I was playing around in the basket uh, and it cost £260 in my size, which I don't know, for me it is a lot. <laughs> I think the most expensive sweater is that light blue sweater, the Cargill, which the yarn I think cost over a hundred, um, maybe 110 or something like that. And that is the most I'd be willing to pay for wool to make myself a sweater uh, so far. So anyway, no shifty in the future. And I'm quite an overthinker as well and the whole point of the shifty is that the colors change on their own and you can't control it. Some people have done yarn surgery where they cut the skin that they don't like a color or try to make the sleeves match, you know, but that stresses me out so I don't think I'm ready for a spin cycle. But something else I want to do from her is one of her fingering weight sweaters because I definitely want to have more fingering weight sweaters in my life. Uh, I'm currently knitting one right now, I'm talking about it in the podcast. It's a v-neck sweater made with 100% lamb's wool, again, from Kinross 4-ply. So I'm gonna use Kinross 4-ply, probably, for the Andrea Maori sweater. And the one I've set my eyes on is the wool and honey sweater. So this is so, so, so pretty. I'm not sure I like the reverse stockinette on the body, but I love the contrast it has with the... Um, honeycomb pattern on the yoke. It calls for Book and Tweed Loft, which I know Loop London has in stock or a yarn story, but they were out of stock for those amber wool and honey colors. And a Holst as well had one that was quite nice, Knit Picks or Kinross for Ply. So Kinross for Ply, I've got a sign right here. Um, so it's, it's really nice and drapey, it's really soft. I think I only need four or five. No, never mind. I need, I need seven skines. That seems like a lot. But I think I need seven skines of this. And this costs about eight pounds a skine. And I'm going to make it in the Highland, Wo Highland Cow colorway, which is this amazing name, an amazing rust colorway or orange. I think it'll go perfectly with that wool and honey vibe that Andrea Maori was going for and that a lot of the people on the project pages on Ravelry have gone for. The only thing I'm not sure about is how this is going to look with that yarn, because obviously it's not the suggested yarn and I'm going to take a leap of faith, but I think I'm going to swatch with even the grey. I'll swatch with the grey because I'll have leftovers to see if the stitch pattern stands out and even after blocking, because that's what I'm worried about. And then I'll see if I like it. And then if I do, then I am buying the Highland Cow. Ever since I've started my fingering weight v-neck sweater, I've been dying to get another colorway that's a bit more fun, because gray is great, but uh, I want a bit more color this year. And this is a, a theme that's gonna come up a bit more in the list that I'm talking about. So the next sweater is the Single Malt Sweater by Maxim Sir. And this is a men's sweater, and it's for my boyfriend. I also talk about that in my previous podcast. So this is a sweater I want to make for my boyfriend. We've been together for a year now. I think he's ready. Um, he's he's great. I'm sure, and he he listens to me talk about yarn 24/7. So he completely understands the effort and time that goes into it, and he will know how to take care of it. And if not, then I'm here. So he was helping me pick a color for this, and we settled on, we were thinking of Malabrigo because it's super wash and 
they have an amazing selection of colors and it's really soft it's merino and I'm actually wearing something yeah made of merino superwash uh, from Malabrigo this is Malabrigo Rios this is a color real lettuce and then we've got playa and pearl and um, yeah this is really comfy I'm not wearing anything underneath so it's just it's next to skin soft which I think will be great for my boyfriend because he doesn't really know about rustic wools yet <laughs> but we'll see in the future um, so there's two colorways that we have in mind. We have Dulce de Leche, which is this gorgeous, gorgeous, soft brown, orange, latte, Dulce de Leche, caramel color. It's amazing. And it's kind of a tonal color. And then we're also thinking of Coco, which is a brown, but that one I'm a bit, I'm a bit more worried about the variegation on that. And I think it might stripe, but in a weird way. But then the pattern from Maxim, the single malt, is has a kind of ribbed-ish texture which I think could help it not stripe too visibly like stockinette would. This sweater here is kind of stripey I guess you can see down the sleeve which I don't know it's okay it's okay but I don't want to have to worry about different dialogues and skines so yeah the other option was to go for Peruvian Helen wool which is not a merino as far as I know and would be maybe a bit more rustic but it's still so soft and maybe it would, it would be a good transition for my boyfriend to, to, to know a bit more like how his skin reacts to that wool and the colorway red scroll was a good match as well for, for those kind of orangey brownish colors which goes so well with his complexion so just have to settle on some yarn for that either Malabrigo or Peruvian Helen wool either brown or orange and then I'm gonna order it and go for it maybe you could do that by Valentine's Day, that could be a good thing to aim for. If not, his birthday is in August, which gives me plenty of time to to do this. So I'm excited. I've got Malabrigo, I've got leftovers Malabrigo, so I could swatch already with the rib pattern from the single malt to see how this turns out. Um, but yeah, this is gonna happen this year. Okay, so number five, it's gonna be a trio. I'm sorry, I just, I'm cheating. I said 10, but it's gonna be more. So I want to use knitting for olive wool. I've bought some but I've not used it yet for some camisoles and for a slipover but I want to make a sweater with their soft silk mohair and their fingering weight uh, merino and the color of way I want to use is claret and this is inspired by Caroline from Caroline's Knits who has made this absolutely stunning rich deep red uh, brang sweater, um, fern sweater as well so they're interchangeable and I either want to copy her completely, I'm sorry, or I want to use those two colors together to then make the first sweater by Lizzie Hive Knits. It's amazing. I love Fisherman's Rib. It's one of my favorite stitches ever. And I want to make a sweater with that in the sleeves. That would be amazing. So I want to make maybe this sweater in the deep red and claret, or I want to make the first sweater in the in the colors that Rebecca from the Crabea used. She used the colorways Mallard from Woolly Knit, British Wool and Midnight from Tilia and it's that amazing jade, dark turquoise, green duck Mallard. It's, it's so stunning. I think it would go well with my eyes because they're blue and I like dark colors. So, so I really want to do that. I just need to, to commit. And then something else I want to do is use Knitting for Olive, maybe in like um, duck blue, baby blue. They've got those amazing blues, basically. They've got an amazing collection of, a selection of colors. And I want to make a light colored sweater in a blue shade and maybe do the Semper sweater from Sophie, the Knit Pearl Girl. Basically what I, number five on the list is I want to make a Knitting for Olive sweater. And these are my three choices for that. So the next sweater is a petite knit sweater. And is that the first one? That's the first petite knit sweater on a list of 10 sweaters. That's unheard of. Uh, she's one of my favorite designers. She doesn't need to be introduced. Of course, you know her. I'm gonna make the Monday sweater for petite knit. And the special thing about that is that I'm going to use a hand dyed Suri fluff, Suri silk alpaca um, substitution rather than mohair. And it's from Zakami. So Zakami are a couple of dyers based in Edinburgh, which is very local to me. 
and they've got this amazing, amazing, amazing colorways. It's amazing. It's lots of neutrals, basically, with a bit of color in the most amazing... I need to stop saying amazing. In the, in the greatest of the speckles and tonals and variegation. They released the collection recently, which is the Winter Wonderland. And I think you can still maybe pre-order, but it may have closed. I think it was until stock runs out. Um, so I've ordered the colorway Brumation because I wanted to dip my toes in this. I don't think I'll enjoy the kind of like terrazzo sweater, Wednesday sweaters that have such bright colors. And I also didn't know whether to go for a hand-dyed base and a normal mohair or a hand-dyed mohair and a hand-dyed base. You know what I mean? I still am not quite sure. I'm guessing that the difference is that if you hand-dye mohair or Suri alpaca, it'll be a bit tamer, which is kind of what I'm going for because, again, I'm dipping my toes in hand-dyed yarns for garments. So this was quite pricey, but it's absolutely worth it. I, I'm not complaining, but it's going to be a special sweater. So uh, I need to find a base for it. I think because of the colorway that I chose, something that's kind of like beige slash light brown would be good. Maybe like marzipan would also be good. So I've got some beiges and I've got some browns and I've got some um, creams that are all left over. So when my order arrives, I'll be doing some swatches. I'll maybe post that on Instagram or I'll keep you updated. So this, this is going to be, this is not as planned a sweater as the other ones, but I'm happy and looking forward to experimenting and seeing, um, seeing how I can do. I forgot to mention the fluffy Surrey base is made of 74% baby Surrey alpaca and 26% mulberry lace, mulberry silk, and it's a lace weight. And this is again inspired by Caroline's knits because she, at the beginning, now she's a little bit less, but at the beginning she was very sensitive to mohair and so am I. My first mohair sweater was made with drops, kid silk, which I've never worn ever because I can't wear it. It's way too itchy. Even through like two layers of clothes, I can still feel the little um, filaments or you know uh, fibers spike uh, and and stab me, which I hate. So I've been on a quest to find a really good mohair. I've been trying all the mohairs. I mean, no, never mind. I am not trying all the mohairs. That's <laughs> Sophie's job, which she has already done. The Knit Pearl Girl. She's made a great video summarizing all the mohairs. And something that she does mention is that kind of fluffy alpaca lace. So what I've yet to try is the brushed alpaca from Drops, which I'm actually about to place an order for, for something else. So I will be trying that, the brushed alpaca. But I want to try this alpaca silk combination. It looks divine and Caroline only has good things to say about it. So I, I trust her for that. Um, but yeah, I think when I make my, my videos in the future, what I will make sure to mention is how the mohair or the alpaca that I use feels. I know it's always subjective and we we don't have the same skin but I got a bit sick and tired of watching videos that would always say that everything was so soft because I, I didn't feel that way uh, so maybe it was a bit of envy of why can people wear such amazing fibers just skin to skin and I have to very carefully substitute I guess <laughs> so yeah excited to find this substitution and to try them on this sweater it's a very basic pattern. Uh, it's quite similar to the no frills, to be honest, but it's got a double folded collar. I think it has got a thicker raglan. And yeah, it's okay. I'm happy to try a new pattern and Petit Knit never disappoints. Okay, so we're about 25 minutes in and then we filmed six. So that's great. Okay, we're doing good. So the next sweater is the Loom sweater by Sari Nordland. And I've already got the yarn for that. I've got Cascade 220 non superwash. And I've got two colors and I've got Vashen Island, Heather and Natural. They've got a big, nice contrast, but this is not, this is not a black. I think it is more very dark brown gray, which is really nice. And the natural is just like an off-white. I think this is going to be great. I'm really looking forward to casting this on. Sarah Norland's patterns are amazing. If I don't do this sweater, but I will because I have the yarn. I will do another of Sarah Norlin. She was doing an advent calendar last month where she was uh, discounting a pattern 24% for every single day. So I've bought, I think, four or five of her patterns. I've bought the Foxberry sweater, 
which is a fingering weight. No, it's a DK weight, but I might hold fingering double or have some alpaca from Holst. Tiki Kaka is a plan. Um, and I've bought the Levi pullover, which maybe I'll make an Istex like it's recommended. Is that crazy? I've just spoken about how my skin is sensitive, but should I? I kind of want to try. It'll be fast. And if I don't like it, I can donate it. I'm sure someone will appreciate that. So this sweater is absolutely gorgeous. It's color work. Uh, I think it's a circular yoke. It's got color work at the sleeves, color work at the bottom, and it's kind of oversized. There's also some beautiful versions of it with a lower contrast between the two yarns, but I decided to go for the colors that the designer picked. Again, this is a common running theme and you will notice that in my future episodes. Like I said, I'm a bit of an overthinker and sometimes I plan for a project and I find myself getting a little overwhelmed and if I'm being perfectly honest, a little stressed and obsessive and then just go on Ravelry, go on all the colorways, go on all the yarn, ask my boyfriend for input and then I don't listen to what he says. I just never know what to pick for colors and sometimes if the designer picked it, it was probably for a good reason. Something that I'm trying to do by making all these sweaters I hope you notice they're all quite different in design and colors and materials. What I'm hoping this year, and I'll try and talk about that more in the future, but I want to find my preferences and find my style. I feel like I don't know myself that much knitting wise. I just make things because it seems fun or it seems pretty, but then I don't know if I like them. And it won't, the only way to know that will be to, to try out different things, so trial and error. I think, for example, I tried this color because I thought I would like it, but I don't actually like it. Like it. I wear this because it's comfy and soft, as Superwash would be, um, but I don't like the color. And now I know that what I would have preferred is a colder tone uh, blue. Like, imagine if this had been done with that blue at the bottom and maybe something else for the cream. That would have been really great. I'm trying out all those different sweaters. I will find what I like, what I don't like. And then who knows, in 2024, maybe all my sweaters will look the same because I will have found my style. It's okay, it's a journey. Okay, number eight is the Office Sweater by Knit Flitter. And again, running theme, this is inspired by Caroline's Knits. She talked about it on her podcast. She used uh, a beautiful, beautiful dark gray from Isiger Yarns, Alpaca one and two. And I also wanted to use her colors, but then I realized I already have quite a lot of dark gray. I think it looks very, very similar to what this is. Maybe hers is a tad darker, but I'm already making a sweater like this. I already have my drops, kid silk in dark gray, the no frills sweater, which I, I never wear, but I spent time working on and now I'm spending a lot of time working on the gray. And I do find that as much as I like wearing gray, it's not as fun working with as other colors may be. So I want to make this office sweater in a different color. And I've, but I want to use the same yarn because again, I think it'll be amazing to use alpaca. I love alpaca. I think it's one of my favorite fibers because it's softer, it's drapier. It is a bit, it still feels a bit rustic and, and you know, authentic. It's not like man-made. So the colorway that I think I've settled on is rust, which is this amazing golden caramel, honey darker like brown or ochre like it's not orange by any means it's not brown either and it's not yellow so i think i want to experiment with that i know those colors look so good on brown haired uh, people and obviously this is blonde hair so i want to see if that um you know washes me out clashes does it make my hair look yellow does it bring out my eyes because you know orange and blue so we'll see. I'm excited to I'm I'm excited to try this mostly because of the color, but also because of the yarn combination and the pattern. The pattern I'm excited to try a new designer that Caroline has only good things to say about. It's got a saddle shoulder construction. Oh, the sun is coming out. It's got a saddle shoulder construction, which I think is always interesting to not only work on but also to wear. I think it will fit me better. This weather is so weird. It is so bright and yet it's raining. And the rain is like horizontal. Okay, the cloud is back. We're safe. It's it's nice. I love Scotland. <laughs> so yeah, I think this sweater is gonna be really, really fun. I'm excited to do it. I think what I'll do, because 
it's a bit of a nightmare because on some websites, you know, the rust color in Alpaca 1 is out of stock, but the second one is okay, and then vice versa. And I don't really want to order from two different shops and pay the shipping twice. But there's a shop in Marchmont, Be Inspired Fibers in Edinburgh, which I absolutely love. It's quite local to me, so I think I'm going to pay them a little visit when they open up after the Christmas holiday period, and I'm going to see if they have either Alpaca 1 or Alpaca 2, so I can already have maybe half of it. And then if I'm there, I'll have to resist not buying any more Zakami, but um, we'll see. It's always nice to go to the yarn shop, isn't it? Okay, so number nine is going to be very different from the rest of the sweaters here. And to be honest, I don't think it's going to be a 2023 project because it is a behemoth of a project. And it is the Primrose Sweater by Mary Wallen. How gorgeous is this? So that one I came to discover by following Madeline from Net One Pearl One. Like I've mentioned earlier, she's got an amazing Instagram, takes lovely photos, and she's knitted this, which is crazy. I feel like the, the Primrose sweater is that sweater that Mary Wallen has made and the sample is there. And you, and you just think, but has anyone else made this? Like, can anyone else make this? Because Ravelry doesn't have that many project pages for this one, I think. But yeah, here, there you go, Madeline did it, so maybe I can do it too. I've got a couple of books from Mary Wallen, actually, and, and they're gorgeous. And again, similarly to Andrea Mowry and Sari Norblen, if I don't do this sweater, the Primrose, then it will be another one of Mary Wallen's patterns. I want to try her as a designer. I have been following her and, and seeing her style and hearing about her for so long. I just, I really want to dip my toes. Something that I've not said before is that I really, really, really like Shetland, Shetland wool. Uh, I have a really close connection to, to Shetland. I've been there like four times and I love it. When I was going there though, I wasn't into knitting, so I've not visited any Shetland wool shops, but maybe I'll come back in the future. And I want to make one of Mary Wallen's patterns in Shetland wool. I would like to. The Primrose one is made with her own brand of yarn, British, British Breeds. And I'm happy to pay for the kits that she provides. Again, it is pricey, so it would be a special project. My parents are coming up to visit me um, at the end of the month, and they still need to give me a Christmas gift, so, you know, maybe maybe a primrose sweater kit would be such a special gift, and uh, as far as I know, it comes in this beautiful sort of packaging. So I think that would be really, really fun, and really hard and challenging, and I feel like it would be this kind of like even if I don't wear it, it would just be a work of art that I would maybe hang hang in my living room or, you know, just... Ah, oh, the sun is back. Hello, I'm back. Sorry if the framing and the lighting is a bit different. Uh, the sun basically showed up and is not going away and I really want to finish this video. So I'm just going to do this and hopefully don't get too close to the camera because if I do, then this happens. <laughs> and no one wants that. So... I'm really going to stay here where I'm safe. So I basically just only have one left on my list, number 10, and it's a Christmas sweater. And this time I'm saying this and I'm making this video in January and I'm doing this now because I, it's on my list. It's so important. I want a Christmas jumper to wear on Christmas Day. So I didn't this year and I just wore, I did wear a hand knitted jumper, but it wasn't the Christmas one. And it did have this kind of like circular yoke. It wasn't this one, it was a different one. Um, it did have a circular yoke, a circular yoke color work pattern. So it did look Christmassy and it was blue and white. I'll show a picture. And I did get a compliment on it. So, you know, what else do you need? But I, I want a Christmas sweater. And the one pattern that I've got my sights on is the Holly Sweater by Pernille Larson, which actually is also the designer behind the Brang sweater or the Fern sweater that Caroline's knits made in that claret color. So yeah, I think she designs for Knitting for Olive. I think she is. Is she the head of the company? Is she the creator behind Knitting for Olive? I have a feeling she is, but I could be so wrong. I should have researched this. So this sweater is also made in Knitting for Olive, uh, Merino and Silk Mohair. There's n like three projects on Ravelry because they put the project up like quite late, the pattern up. And I think only three people then have a page. They have a baby pattern. That one was very popular as well. And I think more people have done it on Ravelry. 
but Instagram, the hashtag, does have quite a lot of people having done it, including Nuria Verstin, which I've mentioned in my previous podcast, is a huge inspiration for her colour choices. So, yeah, I don't know if I'll make it yet in, in Knitting for Olive, because again, it is a bit pricier than usual, than my usual range. Maybe something in Sandless Garn, which is like just like a tad more affordable, and I think have got like an amazing colour selection of neutrals as well. So as you can see, it's a, a neutral base, and then you have this beautiful holly leaves, and then those little bubbles. Oh, it, it, what more do you need? It's great, there's not that many bubbles, and I haven't never made bubbles in knitting, I know people hate them, so I'm kind of curious to see what the fuss is about, but I may regret my words. So I want to make this Christmas jumper, I think it'll be the cutest thing ever. And then the alternative is actually a free pattern, which is the only free pattern of this entire list, and that's the Santa Baby Sweater. And this one is made by Han Rimmen, and this is for Phil Colana. And Phil Colana releases quite a lot of patterns, actually. If you go on their website or you go on Ravelry, they've got tons and tons, and they've got lots of project pages on Ravelry that you can spy on, like I do, to make your choices and see the fit. So that Santa Baby sweater, I've seen someone make it with basically just, I think just the bottom row of the trees. Oh, I'm, I'm wearing the trees right now. Just the bottom row of trees, and it looks great as well. So there's already been some modifications and some advice. I really like when other people have done the pattern before, for obvious reasons, so that I know what it looks like. I know the other color inspirate like color alternatives or yarn alternatives, and then mods. Like this, I wouldn't have thought of removing the color work, but it works on that uh, particular person. So check the hashtag if you're interested. Uh, it feels weird talking about Christmas sweaters in January. I feel like we're all over Christmas. Like, we're over it. I am over it, definitely. So I don't want to knit it anytime soon, but I think I want to have it ready like earlier because I'm sure when November comes, I want to be doing some like gift knitting and, and like winter knits and stuff. So I think maybe I'll cast it on in like September or October and then have it done and dusted and then start wearing it like on the 1st of December and, and more. So that would be really cool. So we've got some time left, so don't worry, I prepared something for this. I have some honorable mentions for sweaters that didn't make the list, but they're definitely on the Ravelry queue. So the first one is the Lento sweater and that one is actually going to get cast on probably next week because unexpectedly, it basically, there's a cal knit along organized by Rebecca from the Crebea and Amy, Amy Palco from the, the Meaningful Stitch, I want to say, and they're organizing, they're both in Edinburgh, they're organizing a, a knit along and have always, always, always wanted to be part of a knit along. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I am desperately trying to be more social and more involved with the knitting community. It's a hobby that 99% of the time you do alone in your room, or at home anyway. But then there's this social aspect that can come with it where we can just like talk about yarn, talk about patterns, talk about mods, talk about issues as well like sustainability, accessibility, size inclusivity, and 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 do some knit-alongs like giveaway, podcasts, uh, meetups, yarn festivals which I also want to do. So I definitely want to do that. And doing that knit along, even though the Lento is a pretty average basic sweater, like it wasn't my Ravelry queue, but it was like so down the bottom because I just thought it would be a, a good simple pattern to do at some point, but it was never like number one. But then I saw the cal and I was like, ah, there we go. Okay, cool. I'm joining. I'm doing it. As always, I agonized over the colors I'm going to use. Ginger Twist Studio, a shop in Edinburgh, they dye their own yarn and then they also sell some commercial ones. They are releasing as well some kits where they are they picked some colors for you. I had a look at them and they were a bit too bright for me. I wanted something more muted, maybe something dark. I quite like that dark green one that the model is wearing. The thing with the sweater is that it's quite a, a, a airy gauge. So it's on seven millimeter needles, I think. So it, it really doesn't use, use much yarn. And I was gonna maybe make it with something expensive, but then I realized, no. The reason I'm doing this knit along is to be part of a knit along. It's not really for the finished product. So I'm gonna use something cheap for the finished product because it wasn't a sweater that I really wanted to make, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's a bad thing or a good thing. 
you know, like, why would you knit something if you didn't even want to? But I do want to. It'll be a staple. It's a very nice, like, if I make it nice, if I make it nice and, and fitting me, I will wear it. So the colorway that I chose are from Drops. And I wanted my fingering weight color to be Drops Alpaca. And it's going to be Hazelnut, which is great. It's a nice brownish, orangish. Like I said, I want to experiment more with color. And then I'm going to hold it either with Rust but then it's gonna look quite similar to my office sweater once I make it. Or with dark gray brushed alpaca, and then the gray on the orange, I'm hoping, is gonna create this marled effect. I will swatch. The yarn, I probably will order it this week when there's more details about the knit along. Then I'll order the yarn, then I will swatch, and it will probably, hopefully, maybe make an appearance on the second podcast I'm gonna release if I haven't filmed it already because I already have quite a lot to say about the, my, new, my new project. So the Lento Cal, join if you're watching this <laughs> and you're learning about it, which I don't think you will be because uh, you will have heard it before. Uh, but you can make it as well and then we can do it together and it'll be a nice cal that will run until March, I think. Okay, and then really quickly, the other sweater I want to make is the Badger and Bloom by Anne Wenzel. She's got two patterns on Ravelry. There's the Badger and Bloom and then the Badger and Bloom unisex. And I have no idea what the difference is. And I think that has been stressing me out. It shouldn't. But because I don't know which one to buy, I've just not bought it, which is so weird. Uh, and the yarn that they use or suggest in one of them is the Isiger Eco Soft yarn, which is a blown yarn, I think. And I really want to use that. I think the colors, again, a bit of a lower contrast where it's not black and white but it's like a really dark grey or like a light grey even, medium grey and a beige or a white or a cream, like off-white I think that'll be great, I really want to do that I think it looks stunning, that circular yoke, it's very interesting I think it's only one one colour work, so no floats, uh, no long floats anyway so yeah, that's on the list as well and then lastly, I'm going to mention a few patterns by My Favourite Things Knitwear that I want to make so they're just in numerical order because I thought that would be simpler. So the first one is the number sweater number nine light, which she has just released, and I want to make that in black yarn. I want a black sweater, and I'm thinking of buying that very fancy yarn that has some cashmere in it. I think it's either Gepard yarn or Lamana Como. So either one of those in black and make this light sweater. I think that would be amazing, and sultry and and is that the word? And and elegant. It will be great, but it's expensive, so I'm waiting to, to, to use some of the stash. And then the next one is the sweater number 20, V-neck, again, Caroline's Knits. I watched her podcast and I saw her wear it and I was like, oh, I had heard of that sweater before and it never really caught my eye. I think the photos that My Favorite Things Knitwear uses in the pattern page aren't that eye, like, catching. But watching Caroline's video, wearing it, like the, the, the big sleeves, the, the nice v-neck, she made hers less large than most of the people did theirs in. And I love that, want that, need that. But I hate cables. I hate making cables. So I don't know if I'll make it this year, but I really want to give it a go when I get maybe faster with cables. Because I don't want to have it on my needles for like six months. Then we have sweater number 22, it's a stripy sweater. I've got already a stripy sweater, it's a Marseille sweater. And for the sweater number 22, it's got some like buttons on the shoulder, it's really nice. It's quite oversized, I probably would just make like, like size down as opposed to sizing up. I'm usually in between sizes. And there's two colorways that I've seen on Instagram. There's one from The Knitting Norwegian and one from Annette. And one of them is beige and brown, and one is beige and black. And I still don't know which one I want to do, but it's going to be one of those two. I don't like the marine white and navy. I don't think I'd wear that. I think, yeah, I'm not going to wear that. So I'm leaning towards the black and camel one from Annette. I think, again, like black sweater would be really fun, but then I don't know. It's so soft and like visually pleasing to see the one from the Knitting Norwegian, so who knows. And then lastly, sweater number 23, which I have the yarn for and I have swatched. I think it's genuinely going to be the next sweater I make. Well, that and the Lento. So the Lento sweater, 
and the sweater number 23, even though they're like both in my honorable mentions of this list of 10 sweaters, they're the sweaters that I'm actually going to be making first, but it's okay. The year is ahead of us. It's only the 4th of January. So, you know, making one and a half sweaters a month all year doable? No, it's not. But it's okay. So if you enjoyed this video, which I, I hope you did, then please consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me. I know I've just started my channel and it's really small and I'm mostly doing this anyway to, to document and it, it, this video here, for example, is to kind of keep myself accountable and remember what the goal was and remember what I'm working towards, which is all of those sweaters. Something else that you could do is maybe tell a friend uh, about this channel or share it on Instagram or comment, just anything that engages you, just anything that shows engagement would really help me out and it would be great and it would motivate me to make more videos. I think I'm going to make a sister video to this video, which is going to be about cardigans. Uh, they will maybe be less, maybe list of eight, because I don't like making cardigans as much and there's not that many patterns on my list, honestly. I have about 40 sweaters on Ravelry, on my Ravelry queue and only 10 made the cut. But cardigans, I think I maybe only have eight or nine in the queue, so we'll see. But if that's something that looks interesting to you or if you want to stay for the podcast that I'm going to make, then yeah, subscribe uh, or come back later. But yeah, it was really fun making this video. I feel like my head is clearer. I feel like I got definitely motivation to make the Cargill sweater and that beautiful light blue yarn. And like I said, I hope that it showcases how... It, it, I hope it showcased a few designers that maybe you didn't hear about. I know there's one Petit Knit and then there's a few My Favorite Things Knitwear at the end. But hopefully there's a few things in the middle that you um, didn't know or hadn't heard about. Yeah, what are your plans for this year? Are you going to knit any sweaters for Christmas or for your partners? Are you going to make anything for yourself that's on this list? Did I inspire you to add more things to your Ravelry queue? I'd be really curious to hear that because I cannot watch a single video that's about knitting without adding it to my Ravelry queue. It's insane. I have a problem. But yeah, I hope that you're doing well wherever you are. I hope that maybe you got some knitting done watching this. Um, but yeah, until next time, take care and have a great day. Bye.